What's going on everyone? It's Tutorial Tim here at Design Academy and today we're going to be building out some dividers. Very straightforward and we're going to cover how they're used and then just create them. It'll be super quick and easy. The longest part will be just describing the usage. So a divider is a thin line that groups content in lists and layouts. As you can see here we have a bunch of list components and they're being divided um, into their own rightful uh, sections with this divider as you can see here we've got that divider element and it talks about the principles behind it so it just is utilized to separate content into clear groups and here you can see that it's heavily used in messaging and this inbox they're using lines to compartmentalize each message being sent and received and here you can use divider here you see dividers splitting the description of this image and and its pricing uh, and then also it's, it's splitting that content where it's very descriptive above and then where there's some actions below and splitting that content. And here we have a divider being utilized to split uh, this page of what looks like contacts. And there's a lot of great in-depth context here. I highly recommend you reading through. It'll allow you to make more intentional decisions on your designs moving forward and will just improve your game as a designer. And here are some examples of dividers being used in certain material design themes, such as the theme labeled fortnightly and owl material theme. And here you can see what that would look like, a divider would look like on a on this primary background. Uh, and then also here is just the specs, which is now in Figma, and we'll go ahead and create that. So uh, very straightforward, it's one pixel in height, and we're just gonna set that to the width of an Android device, which is 360 dip. So if I hit L uh, on my keyboard, that creates the the divider, the line. So I'm gonna set the width to 360 and the height to one pixel. So now I have, whoa, whoops, I'm gonna invert that. So the width is 360 and we now have this line, but the thing, the problem with this line is that we need to, flatten this. So when I say flatten, we actually need to outline the stroke because we have essentially a stroke as you can see here. And when we flatten this stroke, you'll notice in the properties panel, it'll update and we'll go to outline stroke and it'll now become fill. And why do we want that? Well, I'll, I'll have two examples for us because it'll help us when it comes to measuring elements because right now the stroke is centered. So that blue line is the center of where things will be measured. And you'll notice that that's not actually uh, giving us a proper measurement. So if we wanted to separate a group of, of text here and we have this text box specified, you see how this is 60? Well, if I have this lined up, so they're both strokes. If I go ahead and now change this from stroke, you'll notice the di distance is 60 dips. But watch when I change this to a outline stroke, I outline the stroke, it'll change it to a fill. And then you'll notice that now the distance is set to 59 pixels. So the point I'm getting at is to be as precise as possible with these dividers, we need to ensure that we are flattening them. And flattening is just a term for, uh, you see how there's this line here. And then when I flatten it, it's, it's actually a, it's not a stroke anymore. So it's not in the center of that, uh, of this stroke. So it's now essentially kind of like a, a one pixel rectangle that's very thin, you could think of it as. And the with that being said, the measurements will be more precise. And that is exactly what we're trying to achieve. Uh, as opposed to this this stroke where it's set to 60 in distance and this, this flattened stroke, which is no longer a stroke, is set to 59. So that is actually more accurate. Um, so that is great, we have that there. And all we need to do is apply the proper color style and you need to ensure that your uh, material design system library is enabled in this file, as always. And we'll go ahead and select our color styles and go to content and select the surface overlay, which is used for dividers here. And again, you can see that the color specified on that divider is set to 000, which is black, and it uses the 12% opacity, so it's very light and subtle. And some important things to note is that other design systems specify several dividers, which essentially is just utilizing different color styles. And with those different color styles, 
it's just communicating. Uh, you could communicate different levels of opacity. So for example, if I detach this, say this was the regular divider set at 12%, but we had another divider that we wanted to be more prominent in color, we could actually bump up that opacity. Maybe I just bump that up to 80%, 87%. And if we wanted some sort of, for example, muted divider, uh, whoops, let's see here. If I duplicate that and we wanted a, a muted divider, we could just change that opacity again to represent different levels of, of prominence in the divider and how you want that to, how visible uh, you want that to be on your designs. So that's, that's one way of going about building things. But in material design, we just have this one divider and I'm just gonna label that as regular. That was just an example for you all and just reapply that uh, content surface overlay on surface. Uh, color style we now have our divider and i'm going to go ahead and label it divider space slash space and then divider um so that is great actually i can go ahead and just label this as divider and make that a master component main component excuse me and we are good to go that is all we have to do to create a divider and thank you so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one